J-Bone here, and I've got everything you need to know before you watch the 2023 Canadian Grand Prix. And also, I have this cool silver play button now for hitting 100,000 YouTube subscribers. J-Bone! The Canadian Grand Prix weekend begins on Friday, June 16th with free practices one and two. Free practice three and qualifying are on Saturday, June 17th, with qualifying taking place at 3 p.m. Central Time or 8 p.m. UTC. And the Grand Prix is on Sunday, June 18th at 1 p.m. Central Time or 6 p.m. UTC. Here are three Canadian Grand Prix fun facts. Fact one, the 2011 Canadian Grand Prix was the longest race in Formula One history. The race lasted four hours, four minutes, and 39 seconds and featured six safety cars along with a two hour long red flag race suspension. This race is what led to the introduction of stricter time limits in Formula One, with the time limit being changed to four hours in response to it, and then being lowered again down to three hours in 2021. Fact two, in a beautiful display of North American unity, one American driver has won the Canadian Grand Prix, Peter Revson in 1973, and one Canadian driver has won the United States Grand Prix, Gilles Villeneuve in 1979. Now, unfortunately, no American has won the United States Grand Prix, which is very sad, and we need Logan Sargent to change that if we want to catch up to Canada in terms of North American F1 clout. In fact, three, the Canadian Grand Prix's circuit is arguably most famous not for the racetrack itself, but for the fact that a bunch of groundhogs live there and frequently make their way out onto the racetrack and have even damaged cars in the past. To all the drivers, I kindly ask, Please watch out for groundhogs this weekend. And all the groundhogs, I kindly ask, please look both ways before crossing the racetrack. Or better yet, just don't cross the racetrack because you're going to get splattered. Just don't do it. To report on Circuit Gilles Villeneuve's groundhog problem, producer Jeff is now joining us from the Formula Bone pit while at the Canadian Grand Prix. Producer Jeff, what is the groundhog situation looking like currently there at the racetrack? <laughs> Uh, hey, J-Bone. I'm actually under the pit wall right now. I was taken hostage by the Canadian Groundhogs. They said they're willing to negotiate. They have two demands. The first one is that they want more Groundhog Days. They said five is the, is the minimum. That's the starting point. And the other demand is that they want to do a prisoner swap. Um, they they want to trade me for Latifi because he hit their friend Kevin last year. Let's move on to discussing this weekend's circuit, which is located on the man-made Notre Dame Island in Montreal. The Canadian Grand Prix's circuit is named Circuit Gilles Villeneuve, but it wasn't always named that. For the first four years that the Canadian Grand Prix took place at its current location on Notre Dame Island in Montreal, the circuit was named Circuit Ile Notre Dame. In 1978, the first ever Canadian Grand Prix held at Circuit Ile Notre Dame was won in a storybook moment by first-time Formula One race winner Gilles Villeneuve, a Canadian driver from just outside Montreal. This home Grand Prix victory at the final race of the 1978 season kickstarted Gilles Villeneuve's career. He would go on to win 3 out of 15 of the following season's Grand Prix on his way to a second place overall finish in the 1979 World Drivers' Championship just behind South African Jody Schechter. Gilles Villeneuve was thought by pretty much everyone at the time to have been an eventual Formula One world champion due to his incredible speed and driving talents. However, his life was cut tragically short as he was involved in an accident ahead of the 1982 Belgian Grand Prix at Zolder that tragically took his life. To this day... Gilles Villeneuve remains the only Canadian driver to ever win the Formula One Canadian Grand Prix, and because of this, and also because of his status as arguably the greatest Canadian race car driver of all time, sorry Latifi, the Circuit Ile Notre Dame was renamed in his honor to its current name, Circuit Gilles Villeneuve, at the 1982 Canadian Grand Prix, which was held just five short weeks after Villeneuve's death. And although Gilles Villeneuve was not able to achieve the title of Formula One World Drivers Champion in his lifetime like everyone thought he would, his son, Jacques Villeneuve, did, winning the 1997 World Drivers Championship and finally getting the last name Villeneuve on the F1 World Drivers Championship trophy. What an incredible story. You just can't make this stuff up. By the way, if you were wondering, Jacques Villeneuve's best finish in a Canadian Grand Prix at the circuit named after his dad came in 1996 when he got P2 in an absurd race that saw 22 drivers start the Grand Prix, but just eight drivers finish it. 
Breaking news, Formula Bone fans. Introducing Formula Bone YouTube channel memberships where you can get a bunch of YouTube perks and bonus Formula Bone content for as little as $5 per month that goes directly toward keeping Formula Bone around. The second that you become a Formula Bone YouTube channel member, you'll get a custom Formula Bone loyalty badge next to your name in YouTube comments and live chat. You'll get access to custom Formula Bone YouTube emojis. You'll get priority reply to your YouTube comments from me, J-Bone. You'll get two bonus full-length YouTube videos per month available only to my channel members. You'll get access to my weekly written F1 Bone Zone column every single week and so much more. What a deal that is and as an added benefit, you'll also get J-Bone's sincere gratitude for helping keep me employed. A link to become a channel member is in the description of this episode, or you can just click the join button below this video. J-Bone! Here's what a lap around the Canadian Grand Prix circuit Gilles Villeneuve looks like. There's a very short run-up from the grid to turn one, which exits directly into the turn to hairpin, one of the circuit's two low-speed hairpin corners. This hairpin exits onto a short straight that ends at the turn 3-4 chicane. The turn 3-4 chicane is the first of three very similar right to left chicanes with straights on either side of them at Circuit Gilles Villeneuve that can make watching the race on TV somewhat difficult as you sometimes can't tell if you're at the turn 3-4 chicane, turn 8-9 chicane, or turn 13-14 chicane. After the turn three for chicane is turn five, which is the only high speed corner at this low downforce circuit that is mostly straights, chicanes, and hairpins. Turn five takes you to one of the trickiest sections of the racetrack, which is the turn six, seven complex that in true Canadian GP fashion is pretty much just like the other three similar chicanes, except backwards and a little bit wider. This complex exits onto the back straight and its DRS zone that ends with the second of the similar chicanes, turn eight, nine, which exits onto a non-DRS straight that then exits into the second most famous corner at the circuit, Lipangle, I'm sure I totally said that right, which is the circuit's big old grandstand surrounded hairpin where the Lance Stroll fans will be out in full Lance Stroll force. This hairpin exits onto the longest straight at the circuit where drivers will have DRS and this DRS straight ends at the circuit's most famous corner, which features the third of the similar chicanes as well as the legendary wall of champions that has ended many a race, which I will talk about later, with the lap finishing on the DRS pit straight. It's worth noting that the circuit Gilles Villeneuve only features two DRS detection zones despite having three DRS straights. One of these zones services the back straight and one services the two front straights with drivers who overtake on the first of the two front straights being able to then use DRS again on the second one to further their gap as long, of course, as they don't hit the wall of champions. And that's a lap around the circuit Gilles Villeneuve. Jebon! For tire compounds at the 2023 Canadian Grand Prix, Pirelli have opted for the softest compound range, the C3 hards, C4 mediums, and C5 softs. Pirelli Motorsport Director Mario Isola had this to say about their choice, quote, The Canadian Grand Prix is traditionally one of the most spectacular on the calendar, packed with incidents and surprises thanks to a track that offers plenty of overtaking opportunities but doesn't take any prisoners. As is often the case for this type of circuit, we've brought the three softest tires in the range, C3, C4, and C5, just like last year. We expect the C5 to be used mainly for qualifying, while the C4 and C3 are said to be favored for the race. The asphalt is fairly smooth, with this semi-permanent street circuit not extensively used, meaning that we're likely to see a high degree of track evolution over the weekend. On a track with no high-speed corners, the key factors are traction coming out of slow turns, stability under braking, and agility when changing direction. Another important element to consider is the weather. Conditions can change quickly, not just from wet to dry, but also with marked fluctuations in temperature. The asphalt temperature during last year's qualifying was 17 degrees, while in the race, it reached 40 degrees, end quote. Next up, here are your storylines to follow for the 2023 Canadian Grand Prix. Your first storyline, could Lance Stroll pull off a surprise win at his home Grand Prix? The fact that Formula One's Canadian Grand Prix is taking place this weekend is awesome timing for Canadian driver Lance Stroll because Canadian athletes are currently on a hot streak at Canadian sporting events. This past Saturday, UFC 289 went down in Vancouver, Canada, and Canadian fighters went a perfect 6-0 at their home UFC event. The next day, Canadian golfer Nick Taylor hit a monster 72-foot putt 
to win the PGA Tours Canadian Open in Toronto, Canada, becoming the first Canadian to win the Canadian Open in 69 years. Nice. And now, the weekend following those amazing sports accomplishments in Canada by Canadians, you have the Canadian Grand Prix taking place in Montreal with a Canadian driver competing in it who is in a car that is very capable of a podium or even, if the maple leaves a line just right, a race win, maybe, potentially, I have Lance Stroll delusion syndrome. Your second storyline, will Mercedes be as successful in Canada as they were at the previous race in Spain? Mercedes are coming off a double podium finish in Spain that has many people, including me, j Bone, declaring them to be back. And while I do believe that Mercedes are back overall, I do not actually have super high hopes for them this weekend in Canada. They still have a lot of work to do on their car as they continue to understand the impact of the upgrades that they added in Monaco. And unfortunately for Mercedes, a thing their car is really good at, high-speed corners are pretty much non-existent in Canada. And a thing their car is not as good at, low-speed corners are everywhere in Canada. Because of this, I'll be tracking Mercedes all weekend long to see just how back they actually are. But I still think they're back. There is no I in team But there is one in Indeed, and that is the hiring platform you need to build yours. When you're hiring, you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites searching for candidates with the right skills, Indeed is a powerful hiring platform that can help you do it all. Something I love about Indeed, and the reason I use it to hire, is that it makes hiring all in one place so easy, because Indeed's hiring platform matches you with quality candidates instantly. Indeed is truly an unbelievably powerful hiring platform and is the number one source of hires in the U.S. according to Talent Nest. Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash F-B-O-N-E-F-Bone. Offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at Indeed.com slash F-Bone. Just go to Indeed.com slash F-Bone and support the show by saying you heard about it on this very podcast. Indeed.com slash F-Bone. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire. You need Indeed. Your third storyline, can Ferrari bounce back after a disappointing Spanish Grand Prix? After adding upgrades in Spain that we were all led to believe were going to be really good, Ferrari then proceeded to Ferrari and only managed 10 points as a team in Barcelona. All hope is not lost, however, as Carlos Sainz believes that we have not yet seen what their upgrades are truly capable of, and Charles Leclerc's car will presumably be fixed up and ready to go for Canada after issues in Spain qualifying led to him starting the race from the pit lane. Ferrari's only podium this year came at a street circuit that's pretty different to Canada overall, but that does feature long straights and slow corners. So all things considered, I expect Ferrari to bounce back in Canada, but the only question is, how much? Your final storyline, will the wall of champions ruin someone's Canadian Grand Prix? The Canadian Grand Prix's most famous corner is Turn 14, and it's the most famous corner because it features the Wall of Champions right on the edge of its track limits that, if touched while navigating the chicane, has a very high chance of ending a driver's race. The Wall of Champions is historically covered with a Welcome to Quebec message, which I think is very funny, and it became infamous at the 1999 Canadian Grand Prix when it single-handedly ended the race of three World champions during the Grand Prix, Damon Hill, Michael Schumacher, and Jacques Villeneuve, hence the name Wall of Champions. And I, for one, cannot wait to watch all weekend long as drivers try and find the limit at the Wall of Champions while trying even harder to not go over it and crash their car. Now the moment you've all been waiting for here are my three bona fide race predictions for the 2023 Canadian Grand Prix. My first race prediction is that Fernando Alonso will finish in the top two. Last race, a mistake in qualifying at Alonso's home Grand Prix in Spain ended up making it so that he finished off the podium for just the second time this season. His quotes after the race, though, were absolutely inspiring and have me ready to run through a brick wall. Alonso said after the race, quote, this is the last race without a podium, end quote, and When asked what he thought about Mercedes' double podium in Spain, Alonso said, quote, I think it's just one race, and then in Canada, we crush them, end quote. And that confidence, plus the fact that Circuit Gilles Villeneuve's slow corners suit the Aston Martin car very well, Alonso qualified on the front row in Canada last year, and Checo's on a run of bad form, have me believing Alonso finishes in the top two for just the second time since 2014. My second race prediction is that Checo Perez will not 
finish on the podium in Canada. Let's face it, the Canadian Grand Prix is not a place that Checo does well at. You may remember the famous image from last year's qualifying of Checo walking through the forest like he was on his way to go hang out with the Keebler elves inside of a tree after crashing out in Q2 before he only made it eight laps into the race the following day. Ever since a P3 podium finish at his first ever race in Canada all the way back in 2012, Checo has not had the best time at the Canadian Grand Prix, and that's putting it lightly. With the rest of his race finishes being in order, P11, 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 P10, P5, P14, P12, DNF. All of that, paired with Checo's recent run of poor qualifying form, has me thinking Checo does not finish on the podium in Canada. And my third race prediction is that Lance Stroll will finish in the top five at his home Grand Prix. And I believe this because of my conspiracy theory that Lance Stroll's Canadian billionaire father, who owns the team for which Lance drives, will do everything in his power, legal or illegal, allegedly, don't quote me on that, to ensure Lance has a solid home Grand Prix. j -bomb! Next up, here are my predictions for the top five finishers in the 2023 Canadian Grand Prix with zero reasoning nor explanation. P5, Lance Stroll. P4, Checo Perez. P3, Lewis Hamilton. P2, Fernando Alonso. And P1, Max Verstappen. Subscribe now so that I can see you back here after the Canadian Grand Prix for my Canadian Grand Prix recap, where we'll digest all the insanity that occurs at this race weekend together. Special shout out to my top Patreon supporters and YouTube channel members, Colkey, at Rated Bookie, and Glow. And as a reminder, links to become a YouTube channel member and or patron are in the description of this episode. Until next time, folks, j -bon! j -bon!